Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 24 of Direwolf20's server place series. What are you building, Zorin? You wanted sugarcane, so I'm making sugarcane and cactus. Okay. I thought cactus couldn't grow with a block next to it. They can if the block is not solid. Oh. Which like, is why sugarcane and cactus always grow well together. Neat. Mm -hmm. Learn something new every day. This is day. what uh, Chickabone set up in 147. Here, I'll activate my ritual so it grows faster. Does that help? Okay. Uh, Another point, by the way. The, you know that um, long grass that uh, Fireball got that I was looking for ages ago? Yeah. Huh? You can plant re reeds and stuff on that without having to have them next to water. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you can just plant them solid. Yeah. There's a couple Sweet. blocks that do that. And presumably cactus have got them as well. Fancy. Terrain smashers. Okay. So, uh, Soren. Yeah. We've got some good stuff set up over here. Mm-hmm. They just require block updates, which is unfortunate. So I guess a block update will never happen, like, by itself. No, what we could do is set up, like, uh, for now, until it gets fixed. Like a clock? Yeah, and have a piston powered by it. Yeah, that, that doesn't sound like a good time to me at all. No, not really. What wasn't 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 the comparator working, or was it not? Uh, here, put them back, and we can test it. Do you have them? No, you do. Yep, I'll be right back. All right, so we need comparators, right? Maybe the comparator like forces an update or something. Maybe. Periodically checks what, yeah, okay. Uh, but we can't have it touch this alchemic calcinator because it disables it, but we can always move that if we need to. Okay. See, so yeah, that's working. Okay. Um, without comparators. Do we just need to tell way to add a notify to the neighbor? See how the redstone is not getting updated on the teleport? But if you force a block update, like by placing a block next to it, it's bringing the redstone power back. But comparators apparently are updated somehow for some reason. They constantly make the block next to them, I think, update. So Interesting. Maybe. Well, long story short, uh, this thing <laughs> is pretty much automated at this point. Um, you know, when these things are full enough, they should work. Um, just wish we didn't have this calcinator touching this thing there's got to be a slightly better way for this to work right maybe uh, I, i'm not sure i'll figure something out maybe at some point might have to move it we could always just move this barrel over and move this one away but eh, we'll see all right guys let me uh rearrange this system and i'll be right back all right soren so i came up with what might be a really cool way to auto craft with the altar and I think it could be neat. Um, one thing is, can we hook up this uh, barrel of gunpowder to like a... Yeah. We'll put it over here, but can we hook it up to like a storage thing so it's available in the AE system? Yep. Uh, probably export bus. Well, yeah, for now, export bus. Okay, the other thing I'm going to say okay. is I want to um, go ahead and replace these chests with ME interfaces. So do you have some cabling I can borrow? I have six on me, but if you request from the system, it should give you some. Cool. I think this is gonna work. If not, it's not the end of the world, but it would be really cool if it worked. Oh yeah, it does give you hunger if you fall into the UU map. Yeah, now. that's weird. Is that new or? I guess so. Well, actually, we haven't updated, so I don't know what's causing that. So what Sorry, kind of cable should I be so. using here? Should I be using this smart cable, Fluix? Uh, yes, and wherever you come out of, like, if you connect it to this cable, then you'll have eight channels. If you come out of this cable beneath us... We're missing right another quartz. One moment, please. <laughs> <laughs> don't pay no attention to me flying away. <laughs> Where could Soren be going? No, we're where? 
Um, I guess while we're waiting for that nether quartz to cook, would you like to show me your super Soren drive? Because I've had several people request an explanation as to how it works. Um, one of those people was me. <laughs> okay. Because I have no idea what that thing's all about. Like, I thought I understood A2, and then I saw you build something really complicated, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what? Like, and I gather that it's mostly intended really to excessive. save on channels. Yeah. It is yeah. excessive, because, like, clearly this is the case of we crafted 500 iron buckets for no reason, right? right. Like, so, yeah. So, if you look at this blue cable here. Yes. This top one right here is the actual super soaring drive. It is using one channel on the entire network. So this line right here? Yeah. The next, rest of next this to the is cobblestone. the interface and the storage buses. So there should be only three channels to this cable right now. Okay. And the super soaring drive uses the fact that subnets can request storage from a net. So the storage bus links to the interface and requests any items that this network has. And that can cascade all the way through. Okay. So, realistically, you can have two channels dedicated to making subnets, the interface linking it to the previous net, and the storage bus requesting from the next net, and then six drives. Is this what I sound like when I explain things? Because I have no idea what you're saying to me right now. That's how I feel <laughs> with the magic mods, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know what you're talking about. So you're saying a lot of words. To... Do you have the cable on you right now? I uh, the Fluix cable? No. Cable. I can go get some. I I'll kind of this. placed it already, but that's good. That's fine. No, I can get I can get more. Alright, I have that's, some. The Sirtis cords had like micro buckets for it. Okay, I've got it. Alright. So let's get an interface and a storage bus and just go over to open space. Oh man. Really? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Color applicator. We're gonna color this uh, purple or magenta. Sounds good. We're gonna put a storage bus. Right. Interface. Put this one. Color it something different. Mm -hmm. So this new color represents a new network. Okay. Everything. If we get a terminal from our AE system. That's... So the storage bus is on one network, and the interface is on a separate network. Right. So everything. But the, the storage one... bus can request from the things that are on the interface's network. Yeah, but the interface cannot request back. Okay. So if you have like crafting line on this, it has to be handled by the blue network. Okay. So what we do instead is we just keep doing that over and over for the right. drives. Okay. And that's really all it is. It's just two layers. This green line in between is storage bus central for handling what drives are in it. So if you come over to the terminals that we have over here. Right. You open the green one, you can actually see all the drives or storage cells inside the drives. Nice. So if you see one that's full, we, we're waiting for algorithm to possibly give us like sort by bytes and type. Right. So you see sort, so the most filled is on top. Okay. So I can pull that out, handle it with the IO port or something, and put it back in. The glory okay. of this, I can just keep going forever and only use one channel on the system. Right. See, that's what I like about AE2. This whole channel thing, like, people think it's really confusing. It's really not, uh, especially if you use, like, the smart cables. It's... Unless we explain it, then it really is confusing. Yeah, like, this is, why, this is why I spotlight mods and you don't, I think. <laughs> yeah, this is why I don't understand magic mods ever. Um, but long that, story short, the one he was building. I, I, I think... <laughs> I think what it basically comes down to, like, is if you want to use it in a simple form, it's really easy to do. But if you want to do, like, really complicated things, you can, and that's optional. And that's what I think is what makes a mod really fun. Like, that's what I like. When I just spotlighted Steve's Factory Manager, for example, you can do very simple, basic things very easily. But if you want to be exceedingly complex, you can. Um, and that's what's basically going to happen. Right. Um, if I could set this up real quick and show you... Oh, yeah, we have 120 nether quartz now. That was quick. Yeah. Uh, do so, you have any chests on you? Do I have any chests on me? I mean, I don't. But... Um, not on me. I could make one. Uh, no, we probably have, we have two in the network now. Okay. I have an easier way to explain this, and I just realized. 
Alright, if you say so. <laughs> well, I had chest and network, where are they at? Alright, so that should link in, and now I should be able to keep certain items inside this inventory, like the kinds of items we're going to need, um, which is redstone. Uh, can we teach our AE system how to make sugar cane into sugar? Yeah. Alright, where's the terminal for that? There it is, pattern terminal. You're going to get down to the molecular assembler part of that. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, where is the molecular assembler? Is it this uh, crazy thing molecular over Molecular flower, yeah. All right, so it doesn't matter where I put this, or you no, have any? any of the interfaces will okay. work. I picked a random one with things that had nothing related in it. Right. Like, that's how I'm doing it. Nice. Um, so the gunpowder... Oh, you put an export bus here. Yeah, for now. So we can get... Because that's all we have in the system. Well, no, I want it to be like a storage bus. Why am I suddenly getting nausea? Oh, I bet my mob farm isn't chunk loaded. That's not good. To the mob farm! <laughs> nausea, bad! <laughs> I'm in all. Let's make two. Yeah, I currently have 12 LP at the moment. Oh, I know why. It's because my thing is not in there where's my uh i think i left it in the system somewhere i'm gonna need to get this up and running again sorry for mm. nausea youtube i don't know where your orb is it's not in the a system i think it's in one of the uh altars i have to make a new one oh. yeah it's the dial 20 orb hooray way back Ah, oh, so much better. Uh, so I need a weak blood shard. Do we have any in the A system? Blood shard. Yes, we have two. Good. I need another one of these things, and I can't think of a better way to get it. I'll be back in a minute, guys. I'm going to cook up this uh, new orb. All right, guys. I am back. Yay. So, I think I might have this a little easier to understand. What did I do wrong here now? No idea. Why isn't it keeping it stocked? Reading. Trying to keep something stocked. Where? How? The interface over at the blood altar. Went right soon. And then it pulls it. Put... It's not. It's not like working. If I put the baked potato in there, it's not hooked up. Are you sure this thing's like connected? What are you connected to? Oh no! no, no. <laughs> you need to use P2P for that. Why? Because that's the net P2P network. What? What? Come here. For the controller right here. Ow. Hunger. Hunger bad. Oh, you have a P2P tunnel there. Okay. Yeah, so I you see. have all 32 channels open to you. Okay. Uh, so I need a P2P channel. Which I have a P2P nut tunnel here if you like. Oh, thank you. So I just have... But I have to link it, right? And the card is here. And that'll already link it linked. up. Huh? It's already linked? Already. Yeah, you just need to right-click it to the tunnel when you're ready. Okay. So basically, I plug it in like this, right? Mm -hmm. And you just put the cable down after you right-click it, and it should connect. It should be good. Yep. Hooray, it go. worked. Now, um, I think I have to put a crafting upgrade in there in order for it to craft items, right? Yes. Which I don't know. Do I have that in my card? I might have one on my card. I got one already. Okay. It was I like how the network make. tool can hold upgrades for you. Yeah. Nice. 
So it's auto crafting the sugar for me. That's cool. I like it. Uh, we're apparently also going to need netherrack and sand. Fireball told me I had to poke you with this a couple times. No, don't poke me with things. Something weird happens around me. Ah, creepers, what did you do? <laughs> What did you do? Is that fun plan? That fun plan I was talking about. Yeah, that's what I've been experiencing all past three days. <laughs> well, the joke's on you. <laughs> <laughs> I am staying in this form now. Luckily, they don't have any explosion radius, so they explode. <laughs> Just boom. Yeah, they're fake explosions, I know. Flim Flam is a good time. Uh, you say that, except I've been getting that every 10 seconds all yesterday, so... Yeah. So I need bone meal and nether wart. Fireball, you better be happy now. <laughs> he just got all the creeper spawns. I did. So hopefully this is pretty darn good here. Um, the other thing I'm going to want, I guess, is so that covers um, simple catalysts. It covers strength and catalysts. Uh, I need obsidian. And I need dirt. Did I do dirt already? I didn't do dirt. So I need obsidian, I need dirt, and I need lapis and nether quartz. Every time I go past the creeper, I'm gonna have to refrain from killing it now. There we go, and this will go on this side. Sweet. That's cool. So now our ME system should keep stocked any items that we would potentially need to make stuff with. So for example, if I said I wanted a simple catalyst, it should pull it in. Nice. You know what, I probably need to have two redstone. Yes, I need to have two redstone in there. Cool. Okay. I like that. Also, we're pretty much out of sugar cane. Oh, you know what I'm going to want to have is also a couple more cables. Yeah, I almost hooked up. There we go. Okay. Can I have my card back for the... Linking that. Ah, hi, Bumiel. What? What is going on? You have a magnet on. Stop having a magnet on. <laughs> I just walked up and saw everything just pop out of nowhere. Uh, you want the card? There you go. Yeah. I need to try my magnet before I get closer to you again. There needs to be a hockey for that. It really needs one. Yeah, that wouldn't be terrible. So. All right, guys, let me sort out this inventory thing, and I will be right back. All right, guys, we're back, and I want to actually store stuff inside this chest. I know. So, Soren, I made a storage bus here, like so. All right, we have one resin. <laughs> Ironically. What's that? He had exactly one resin in his inventory or his system. Sweet. Which means we could scan it. Alright, scan. So I'm gonna put Terre, Magicalis, Potentia, Orbis Terre, Simple Catalysts, and Strengthen Catalysts in the storage bus. Storage. What do you need? So in theory, when I put these catalysts in the A system, they should land in this chest. Ha ha! Nice. Right? 
So that is that. So now I've done two things so far. Number one, I've set it up so that the ME interfaces from our AE system can hold on to the items um, that are required for crafting stuff in the blood altar. So now all I really need to do is figure out a way to get it to actually stick something in here as needed on demand. Um, and that is what's gonna come next, I believe. So the only other thing I need to do is make sure that, I don't suppose there's a way that I can like set this up so that it always leaves at least one in the system. That would be nice. Do it. Like make it so that it never pulls out the last of an item in the chest. Like see how there's like one potentia in there? Like you don't have access to that last one. Logic Gates has, or um, yeah, Logistics Pipes has stuff like that, but I don't think AE has anything like that. All right, we'll be back we in a minute. Translocator. All right, guys, time for the next trick. Uh, I'm going to use Steve's Factory Manager to automate this even further. So what I'd really like to be able to do is... And I might need to make this look a little bit nicer, and I probably will at some point. But for now, I should have access to the following inventories. Um, the blood altar, the iron chest, and the wooden chest. And I also have access to the interface, but I'm not really interested in that. Um, so basically, I want to do a couple things. I want to make it so that we always have like 10 of a certain item inside this chest. So I need to come up with a little plan here so that I can basically when item X, like Potentia, is less than 10, um, you know, go ahead and grab the Potentia out of this chest, because I'll need to keep one of each item in here. So, like that, pretty much, yeah. So one of each item stays in the wooden chest. We'll move the item from the wooden chest into the blood altar when that item is less than 10 in here. So I'm going to set that up right now-ish. All right, guys, we're back. So here's what I think. Condition, inventory, iron chest, this guy. Um, any side, items requires simple catalyst, amount 20. So if there's 20 simple catalysts in the iron chest, if true, then we're going to pull items out of the blood altar and the item we're going to pull out is the simple catalyst. Though I should really just have, yeah, that's fine. Um, and then we're going to place it in the wooden chest. And the item will be simple catalyst. If false, if less than 20 items in the chest, uh, then input is the wooden chest, this guy, and output is the blood altar and the items is simple catalyst. So if I'm right about this, this should basically say, if there's less than 20 simple catalyst, it should pull the one out of the wooden chest and put it in the blood altar, thus causing the blood altars to start auto crafting for us. And then, um, oh, you know, there's 20 in here. I should actually pull those, or there's 10 in there. I should pull those out. I guess that was from leftover. But why are you throwing arrows at me? <laughs> um, and then once there's 20 or more in the iron chest, it'll pull the simple catalyst out of here and be done. That's the plan. All I need to do is add a trigger and connect it up, and we'll see what happens. Ah, trigger. Get trigger. Back up here. Are you thinking interval? Yeah, but it's an interval trigger. Oh, see? Simple catalyst went into <gasps> here. How oh. cool is that? Ooh, ooh. The only problem is the way the way the alchemy table works, it's a little bit derpy-ish. Okay, how so? It dumps all those items in there. So once we hit 20 simple catalyst in the iron chest, um, this should pull the simple catalyst out of the chest thingy thingy there. Mm. So tell me when we've hit 20, Soren. 20. And it's gone. <laughs> How cool is that? The only problem is the chemistry set, because of the way it works, starts doing stuff. Um, so I have a solution to that. Um, but it's kind of annoying. Um, so what I'm going to say is... Um, I'll be right back.
All right, guys, so my plan is to now insert a redstone control card and an ME import bus right underneath the Alchemic Chemistry set and basically say active with signal, and then I can connect this up, and it shouldn't pull items out unless it's receiving a redstone signal. But where did my orb go that was in there? There was an orb in there, wasn't there? Well, there we have nether quartz now. Lots and lots of nether quartz. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's seven buckets. What? That's not at all what that thing said. That was an apple that you scanned. Oh. We're not making resin. <laughs> you scanned an apple after I put that in. Way to go! I know. <laughs> I can't pull out of the bottom of here, apparently. So, Dyer, we have a small problem with the resin idea for uh, UU Matter. Oh? It costs seven buckets of UU Matter to get <laughs> resin, which isn't a problem for us. The problem is the amount of U EU required for 0.1 millibucket. <laughs> that would take yeah. forever to get one resin. Well, don't worry about the resin. It's not that big a deal. Okay. Why did you scan apples, Firewall? To throw you off with the, the resin. Why? <laughs> so I have to pull this out from the side, and it pulls out... Oh, that stinks. Um, Alright. Back in a minute, guys. Alright, guys, we're back, and I think I've created a solution here. Uh, I just hooked up my inventory cable to the Alchemic Chemistry set, and after we pull the item out of the altar, which actually I believe is this line. Inventory is wooden chest output. So that actually is over here. Uh, so after we pull the item out of here and to test this, we have like gunpowder and who knows, like glowstone and redstone, for example. Right. So stuff's in there. Um, and by the way, I blacklisted the master blood orb. So, oh, you know what? He probably, I bet he stores the player name as NBT data, doesn't he, Soren? For what? The Master Blood Orb, you know how it's bound to a player? He probably uses oh. NBT for that, right? He has to use NBT. All right, so I have to say NBT independent detection for that. And now, input. And that should pull all the items out, but not pull out the Master Blood Orb. Perfect! Uh, by the way, I have them outputting to a... Um, ME interface, the one that's under here that I said I didn't need to access. Well, I need it now, so, huh. <laughs> so long story short, if I pull like half a stack of these out of here, Simple Catalyst should immediately go into the blood altar. Um, the alchemic chemistry st set should start running and creating more of these, right? So we have 17, we have 18. Once we have 19 uh, and then 20, what we should see is the catalyst come out of the altar and we should see the altar empty itself out automatically. Boom. Altar emptied. Dun, 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 dun. Everything beautiful. Perfection. I love it. So now all I have to do is the exact same setup here, but um, do things with like strengthened catalysts and Orbis Terre and, you know, Potentia and Terre. So I just basically duplicate everything I just did. Um, all we have to do is put like Terre in here, for example, and what we'll wind up with is it'll pull all the items it needs from Terre from the enemy interfaces on the sides, right? So it's really easy to do. And what I'm going to do is create a command group right now um, that I'm going to drag everything into. Ta-da! Have you played with command groups, by the way, Soren? The yes, they're the greatest thing ever. You can also I like the uh, group nodes for yeah. assigning input output. Yep, it's very cool. I just asked him because I have to basically copy this exact command now. So I just sent VSW a message. I'm like, can I copy groups somehow? You cannot. No. I have wanted to for so many things so far. Oh yeah. I just asked him if it's possible, so... If not, then it should be. <laughs> yeah, maybe it will be soon. But that, I think, we just fully automated the blood altar alchemic chemistry thingy mabobber thing. Like, fully automated, very cool. I'm impressed with how awesome that is, and it looks nice. great. 
yeah, it's really cool. If I wanted to, I could hide these inventory cables or do something with them, but I'm not that concerned with it right now, so I'm not going to. Right. But have, did you see, like, the um, – did you check out the camouflage stuff? I saw it, but I didn't – when I was in single player, I couldn't place it, so I wasn't really sure how that worked. Oh, you want to see it? It's really cool. Sure. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap up the video here, uh, but you guys are more than welcome to uh, check out all the f cool and fun stuff in the spotlight. Um, the three spotlight segments should be up by the time this video goes live, so if you're not super familiar with how Steve's Factory Manager works, definitely watch the spotlights, and it will help you out. For now, Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.